We've seen from previous videos that the expression for the Gibbs energy of reaction is equal to the standard Gibbs energy of reaction plus RT, gas constant times temperature, times natural log of our reaction quotient. So in this video, we want to look more into this reaction quotient and see how we can use it to determine whether a reaction is spontaneous in the forward or reverse direction and whether the condition for equilibrium has been reached. So the value of <clears throat> the Gibbs energy of reaction is going to determine whether or not a reaction is spontaneous. <clears throat> That's not going to be determined by the standard Gibbs energy of reaction, but it's going to be determined by the Gibbs energy of reaction, which takes into account the specific reaction conditions through the reaction quotient. So if our Gibbs energy of reaction is greater than zero, then we know that that means our extent of reaction is going to be less than zero, meaning we're going to go in the reverse direction. It is spontaneous in the reverse direction, the reaction is. So you can say that the reverse reaction is spontaneous. And it would take some input of energy in order to get the forward reaction to occur. Similarly, if the Gibbs energy is less than zero, we know that for things which have a Gibbs energy which are less than zero, they are spontaneous. So when the Gibbs energy of reaction is less than zero, that means the extent of reaction will be greater than zero. And the forward reaction will be spontaneous. It will occur on its own without any external input. And the condition for equilibrium was when the reaction gives energy equals zero. That's when, if I could draw this character, it's kind of a difficult character to draw, C equals zero, our extent of reaction equals zero, and we are at equilibrium. Okay, so we're at equilibrium there. And we've also seen um, from previous videos that the expression for the standard Gibbs energy of reaction is that it is equal to minus RT log of K. So um, if we're talking specifically about pressures, I could put the little P subscript on there. I'll just do that because we've been talking about gas phase thus far primarily. So that means if we have the Gibbs energy, the standard Gibbs energy defined in this way, and the Gibbs energy defined in this way, then our resulting, uh, our resulting expression here, excuse me, is going to be that the Gibbs energy of reaction will be substituting in this minus RT log K plus RT log Q. So um, whenever we have something log something and then minus something log something, uh, we know that we can take that log and put it in the denominator um, based off of the properties of logarithms. So that can give us the expression if we rearrange here, which is that delta G of reaction is equal to gas constant times temperature times natural log of the ratio of the reaction quotient to the equilibrium constant. So this gives us the criteria for spontaneity in terms of the reaction quotient and its value relative to the equilibrium constant. So we're going to have if QP is greater than KP according to this equation, if the reaction quotient is greater than the equilibrium constant, then we will have delta G of reaction which is greater than zero, and then the reverse reaction will be spontaneous. If we have a reaction quotient which is less than the equilibrium constant, then it wants to rise in order to reach equilibrium, and the Gibbs energy of reaction will be less than zero, and in that case the forward reaction will be spontaneous. And when the reaction quotient equals the equilibrium constant. That's actually the definition of the equilibrium constant is the reaction quotient when the reaction is at equilibrium. So 
delta RG will be equal to zero, and that will be equilibrium. Ah, that's not good. I've been putting those as I've been putting these as standard. I don't want to put those as standard, so I'm going to replace that real quick, hopefully. Okay, good. They're gone. 